Right then, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be doing a little bit of myth busting. We have seen plenty of videos on YouTube stating that snorkels can lose power or gain power. So, we're going to be putting it to the test today. We've got Rob's transporter on the dyno. This is a 2 litre CAAC engine which is the CR140. It's got a mild tune on there at the minute so it's not pushed very hard. Four wheel drive. We've got all-terrain tyres on, so we expect there's going to be kind of some losses on the, the power anyway. But all we're going to do, we're not going to change the software, we're just going to run it up with the snorkel connected and with the snorkel disconnected and see what power it does. So I were a little bit dubious. I've held off fitting one of these for quite a long time now, mainly because I'm not going to be wading it or it's very unlikely that I'm going to go through any deep water. Might do a few lanes in winter. Better be safe than sorry. I did fit it last week, so I've probably done two, 250, 300 miles so far. 272. 272. If I'm being honest, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Done a lot of driving in the V6 Amarox, uh, the V6 and the V10 Twaregs, and it is really noticeable with the snorkel on. You can tell um, they feel a bit restrictive, whereas this don't feel any different. It's only a little two litre engine with standard turbo. We'll see what it does on the dyno now. So we've just done two runs with the snorkel disconnected. Rob's just done with putting that pipe back on now so we can run it up again with the snorkel connected. But let's have a look what power it's done now. At the minute, without the snorkel, we are 254, 256, which is just two runs back to back. It's where we expected it to be. I think it's pretty similar to what it did last time it was on the dyno. So, is that all back on now, Rob? Yeah, good to go. Sweet. See what it does. Any guesses, comment below. How much do you think it's going to lose? How much do you think it's going to gain? I think there's going to be very little difference. So, moment of truth, we've just run it up twice again with the snorkel connected. So I know the figures, but did you guys guess correctly? So let's have a look. So now with the snorkel on there, we're at 151 and 150. Again, that's two runs just directly back to back. And yeah, it's kind of all the way across the rev range. So I suppose there's your answer. Fitting a snorkel does decrease the power. It's negligible. Yeah, it's, 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 it's not a lot. Difference. It's not enough for me to disconnect it and have it run with it off majority of the time. I think it'd be interesting to see if anybody's got a, like a 200 horsepower by turbo with a snorkel fitted and they want to dyno it and we'll do a back to back on theirs. Because I do think there'll be more of a difference on a by turbo, especially if it's tuned. So yeah, if you've got a van and you want it dyno in, just to see. Um, I think the majority of people that are going to be fitting snorkels are not doing it for the performance gains anyway. No. They're using it off-road. To be fair, a lot of them are doing it for looks. Yeah. So. Yeah. So <laughs> A lot of them are leaving them disconnected. I'm going to say so. we know a few of those got them on, but they're not actually connected to airbox at all. Yeah. But I think, obviously, the results of quite a low... Sorry, Rob. Quite a low-powered vehicle, like we've said, it's neither here or there, but I think if possible, we've got a snorkel fitted to the Amarok, V6 Amarok, yeah. that should be 350 odd horsepower, maybe a little bit yeah. more. I think the next part of this video, if we can get a bit of time to do so, we'll pull the Amarok on the dyno and we'll do the exact same test with the Amarok, with the snorkel connected, with the snorkel disconnected, see if it makes more or less of a power difference on something that's uh, a little bit more highly strung. Obviously the V6 engine as well, it's got a bigger displacement, so it's going to be intaking more air naturally. So will the snorkel affect that more or less? Who knows? And just to add, obviously you can see it's a Bravo snorkel. Nothing against these whatsoever. I do think very good value for money kit. It's 
fits really well. It's easy enough to install. I think I did this last Friday night, I think. Started at about six o'clock and I was on at about nine, I think. Um, everything that's supplied with this, relatively straightforward. You need basic hand tools to fit it and a big old saw to go through your wing. Listed on so, website? Yeah, they are listed on website, so I would recommend it. Three, four horsepower. It's not, not put me off whatsoever. Next bit of this video, hopefully, should be the Amarok coming in the dyno. Next part of the test. <laughs> so just to add as well, a little bit more data rather than just yes. letting you know how we think it feels. We have road tested this and we've logged before and after because the transporter does have a pressure sensor on the airbox. So Tom's got the logs here. So what I'm noticing here is there is a substantial, pre I wouldn't say substantial, but there is definitely a pressure drop. Interestingly, at the low end, there is not that much of a pressure drop. Ambient that pressure at the minute is at a thousand. What I'm seeing here on the logs, without the snorkel at the top end, it drops to 980 millibar, which is about right for something that has a bone stock airbox. But it did surprise me that it dropped a further 10 millibar once we connected the snorkel to the airbox. So I didn't realize that that would take around. What is it, five horsepower out of it? Four or five horsepower. Yeah. yeah, four or five horsepower out of it. Interestingly, on the road, without the snorkel, it, it brought it down to 980. With the snorkel on the road, it brought it down to 960, which is a bit of a shock. So there is definitely pressure drop, most likely due to the, uh, let's see, yeah, 963. Definitely the air being pushed out of the, uh, out of the snorkel or being pushed around it. Mind you, last time I saw it, it was the snorkel was pointing backwards, so that might be an effect. Now we've pointed it forwards. Rob cheated, put it in drag mode. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> put it in drag mode. Thanks for that really quick summary you did there, Rob. Tom. 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 <laughs> so I did just end that last video saying that we were going to pull the V6 Amarok on the dyno to test it with and without the snorkel because the V6 is more highly strung than Rob's two litre single turbo transporter van that's doing 150 odd horsepower. Coincidentally, we have got the scrapper rock on the dyno. We recently fitted a bigger fuel pump on that hybrid turbo. So this is quite highly strung for a two litre engine. It's literally just done 251.8 horsepower. And the only things we've changed is the snorkel cold air feed, which would normally have this part on the top. We've removed that and blanked it, so that is now capped off. And under the bonnet, we've removed the, where the cap normally goes, here, and just put in a little bit of ducting just to replicate a cold air feed like the, uh, the factory car would have, but we don't have the factory one, so that's why we've had to put that on there. Now, we're literally just gonna run it up, exact same file, we've made no changes at all, just to see if blanking the snorkel off and utilising the cold air feed makes a difference on something that's a little bit more highly. results are in and unsurprisingly very similar results to the transporter so although this has a hybrid turbo on there it is requesting more boost than Rob's transporter again very similar results with and without the snorkel so before with the snorkel connected it was doing 251.8 without the snorkel connected with the the cold air feed it's now doing 253.7 and 254.4, which are two runs back. So I think this does clarify, we've done two separate tests now, two separate vehicles at different stages of tune, and it does go to show that the snorkel is causing a little restriction. Again, for most people, I think a few horsepower, 
three to five horsepower, something like that, isn't going to be enough for them to not fit the snorkel, especially when the main aim of the snorkel isn't for performance gains, it's for the advantages of being able to drive through water um, off-roading. So, yeah, I think for most people, it's neither here or there. If you're going to fit a snorkel because you need a snorkel, then just go ahead and do it. It's not going to affect the performance enough for it to be a concern. We have got a little bit of data from this as well to back it up. So on the same as the transporter, there's a little pressure sensor on the airbox. I'll ask Tom now and he'll be able to tell you what the difference is before with the snorkel and after with that blank top. So what do we see, Tom? So base pressure is uh, 1027 hectopascals or HPA. Uh, with the snorkel, the pressure drops all the way down to 950. Now, without the snorkel on there, it drops to around 975, 9, 980. So that is a pretty significant amount of uh, pressure drop from uh, just uh, putting a snorkel on the airbox. So take it as you will, but ju just remember this is an off-road vehicle, not performance. So for the power that it's doing, I'd say it's worth it. <laughs> So that's it, myth busted. Putting a snorkel on your car does affect power. Again, as I've already said, I don't think it's enough to cause enough of a problem for you not to put it on there if you're needing a snorkel. If it's just aesthetic, again, you probably just got to weigh up the options, but three to five horsepower, it's not gonna make a difference. You're not gonna be able to feel that on the road. So hopefully you've liked this video. If you have, click the like button, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. We'll see you in the next video.